I'm Elizabeth Gordon, Executive Director of Port City Playwrights Project. On behalf of all of the writers at PCPP, welcome to Port City Shorts. PCPP is a nonprofit organization founded in 2013 by Susan Stedman. We're a diverse group of writers who create both play scripts as well as screenplays. With this production, we're working with an amazing trio of directors, Anthony Gabrielle, Kayla Hager, and Regina McLeod. When you view these six films, please know that each director hand-picked the scripts they wanted to work on. We believe this creates a special relationship between the story and the director, and I think that shows in their work. We're so lucky to have these three, and we're equally grateful to the actors, the crew, the technical people, everyone who worked on this production. Uh, it's a minuscule budget, and people work extremely hard, and we appreciate all of them. And finally... We want to thank you, our audience, for tuning in to support independent filmmaking. If you were able to donate, thank you again. If you weren't at this time, but enjoy what you see, you can always go back to Eventbrite later and give a donation then, and we'll appreciate it just as much. We'd also like to thank the Arts Council of Wilmington and New Hanover County, as well as the North Carolina Arts Council for their encouragement and support. And now, without further ado, Here's the eclectic collection of films we're calling Port City Shorts. seen you forever. You, you got jacked. I was down in New Orleans, visiting my cousin, visiting the gym. Okay. Got something special. J juice? No. Okay. Just a supplement. His triceps are as good as my biceps. You, you mind if I score some? problem. I'll tap my cousin. Sweet. Are there any side effects I need to know about? Well, you might have some cravings. I mean, eat clean. A normal diet. Veggies, protein. I found I crave chicken, my cousin fish. Okay, so like a, a protein craving. Okay, I can, okay. Yeah, I mean, I caught myself night eating chicken once. Woke up, standing in front of an open fridge, choking on a bone. Oh, okay. Um, well, for calf death like that, I could, I could buy some chicken, maybe just like breast without the bone or something. I don't know. Um, Dude, it's good to see you, man. Oh, yeah, you too, dude. Keep, keep in touch. Let yeah, we that. Uh, save up your money. Stock up on some chicken. <laughs> and fish, coconuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, dude, you forgot your workout journal. Here. Keep it. It's got diet plans. You'll be hungry. Uh, okay. Workout plans, you name it. All me. All right. Thank you, dude. We'll be in touch. Yeah. I'm 
Well, one week and $400 later, I get a package in the mail. Dr. LaRue's Body and Soul Enhancement Powder. Um, pretty simple. Just a powder. Pink powder. Nice powder. And the directions called for one teaspoon mixed with whole milk once a day before or after I work out. Hmm. Easy peasy. Alrighty, video diary day one. Dr. LaRue's magic potion. Do your magic. Video diary day two. I'm getting a little more hungry. I'm gonna have to do some grocery shopping, but my biceps are getting bigger. See? That's what I'm talking about. Really freaking hungry. Already had three chicken breasts and a small steak. Fridge is completely empty. Must have eaten overnight again. Gotta do some more grocery shopping, but hey, this stuff is working. <laughs> you see? Where's the cat? Buttons. Buttons. Where are you, buddy? somewhere I can smell you where's the dog I'm on my way to the mall food court to find someone to eat traffic you wouldn't believe this but there's a lot of people going to the beach this weekend too okay you get the power washer mission accomplished Frank said we keep it as long as we like weighs a ton too I might need some help getting out of the car okay. speaking of cars whose car is that parked in front of our house oh I think it belongs to someone staying at the Braggs the Braggs yeah our next door neighbor mr. Bragg came over he introduced himself I guess they're having some sort of family union this weekend. It'll be gone Monday. Monday? That's what he said. You, why don't you go over and introduce yourself? I bet he'd be willing to help. Matter of fact, he said just say the word and he'd help us if we needed anything. I definitely need to have a word with him. Okay. And he invited us to a Get Acquainted cookout next Saturday. 
Uh, we exchanged numbers. I told him I would send him a text once I spoke to you. That car's got to be moved. Excuse me? The car in front of our house, it's got a Confederate flag on its bumper. <laughs> a bumper sticker? Of a Confederate flag. Honey, you need to relax. <laughs> Nobody is paying any attention to the bumper of a parked car. That's for driving. You know, for the car behind you to read. Please, please, don't patronize me. Look, I don't want any problems. We just moved in this neighborhood. We haven't even finished unpacking. Yeah, but when a car with a Confederate flag on its bumper parks in front of our house, I pay attention. Now, I'm not going to allow any Confederate flag in any shape or form wave in front of our house. Oh my God, there is not a Confederate flag flying in front of our house. I was speaking metaphorically. It, it doesn't bother you. No, I could care less. That piece of cloth is not about to oppress me, okay? And it's, he seemed nice enough. You know, I heard Hitler was really nice to his dogs. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, hey. All I'm saying okay. is, <laughs> all I'm saying is, if you look hard enough, you can find niceness in anybody. Uh, look, just because the guy's nice doesn't give him a reason to fly a racist flag in front of our private property. Uh, would it be better if it was a Nazi symbol? Of course not. And the street in front of our house is not our private property, okay? Look, why don't you just get a glass of wine and relax? And I'll order some Chinese fruit from one, uh, Szechuan 132. Is, is, is that good? Okay. You go ahead and call in the order, but I'm going to have a word with Mr. Brett. When? Now. Nah. The Civil War is over. It is the 21st century. Who cares? Sorry. God. Good trouble. Can I help you? Hi, I'm Hope Campbell, your next door neighbor. I was wondering if I could have a word with you for a minute. Sure, I just met your lovely wife. Please come in. No, 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 that's okay. I, I know you got company over and I, I don't want to intrude. What can I do for you? I need to ask you a favor. Sure, anything for neighbor. I'd like the car in front of my house to be moved. Come again? <clears throat> I need the car in front of my house to be moved. I just spoke with your wife about this. Yeah, she mentioned something about a family reunion. What family reunion? She said that's why all the cars. Uh, no. It's the reenactment at Fort Fisher of the Union siege January 1865. I'm General Braxton Bragg, the commanding general. Uh, the real General Bragg was my great-great-grandfather, and they named Fort Bragg in his honor. A reenactment? As I told your wife, all the cars will be gone Monday. Now, if there's nothing else, I need to get back to my guest. The car in front of my property has a Confederate flag on its bumper. It belongs to a friend. He's up from Mississippi uh, for the reenactment playing Colonel William Lamb, who was the commander of Fort Fisher. Where are you from? Sorry? Where are you from? Where were you born? Scranton, Pennsylvania. Why? <laughs> I knew it. A Yankee. So tell me, how does a Pennsylvania Yankee get a southern name like Hoke? I'm named after the Morgan Freeman character from Driving Miss Daisy. My mother loved that movie, and she loved that character. Those two characters are nothing but an updated version of the Mammy Scarlet O'Hare characters from Gone with the Wind. Classic, stereotypical Southern servitude. Right. You Yankees think you can move down here and tell us how to run things. Try to make us take our monuments down, change the name of our military bases. What y'all don't understand is the South is a place, East, North, and West. They are nothing but directions. Did it ever occur to you that some soldiers, especially African-American soldiers, might not be too thrilled about serving on bases named after racist Confederate generals? Those generals fought a war for the principles of states' rights. Slavery didn't have a damn thing to do with it. The Confederate flag is a symbol of that principle. You tell that to the neo-Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan. 
The flag stands for here, it is not hate. The Civil War is over. You can reenact it, but you can't change the outcome. In this house, it's called the War for Southern Independence. Whatever. You see that red stake right there? What about it? That stake represents the borders between our properties. Please have General Lamb move his car off my property. Colonel. What? Colonel Lamb. I'm the general. Power washing and uh, four o'clock. It's uh, Carolina and Duke on ESPN. And in case you didn't notice, the car has been moved. I saw. <laughs> you know, Connie. Sometimes in this life, you uh, have to make a stand, and you got to stand what you believe. I see. I think I'll bring the general a bottle of wine just to prove there's no hard feelings. He seems more like the whiskey type. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to do some yard work today. Okay. Hey. Okay, I'll let him know just exactly as you said. One hour. That was our neighbor. He said he wants his flag back or he's going to the police. You mean General Bragg? Is this all a game to you? What's going down at Fort Fisher? That's a game. Is that what you think? You think this is all a game to me? I don't know what to think. I want to live peacefully. This is our dream home. Wilmington is our dream city. You finally have your dream job. Remember what it took to make all of this happen? Okay. Okay. If it means that much to you, he'll get his precious flag back. Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that. How so? He wants you to deliver it to him. <laughs> no way. There's more. More? Yeah, I, um, he wants you to meet him at the stake in an hour with the flag and apologize. Um, he wants me to send him a text message in 30 minutes if you accept the terms. If you say no, he's going to call the police and then the news media. Are you serious? Are you fucking serious? Accept his terms? That surrender. But that's like the reverse of Grant and Leah at Appomattox. Hell no. Holy shit. Holy shit, I get it. Get what? In his small mind, he's trying to reverse the outcome of the war. He wants to make me and what I stand for the loser. The South shall rise again. Or so he thinks. That's crazy. Not just crazy. Bat shit crazy. Okay. Alright. If that's the way he wants to play things, fine. Bring it on. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Unbelievable. Oak, you're so much better than this. You're right. You're right. I am. We all are.
let me see if I've got this right. You and Pines died and had some sort of out of body experience? Right. And you, I think you traded something during this experience. Yes, that dog entered my body and took possession. Because of him, I have episodes. Dog episodes. Possession? He seems to be a sweet dog. He's not a sweet dog. He doesn't do his tricks. I do them. I do them. I do dog tricks. Uh, how can I help? Change us back! But change what back? Us! Heinz and I! Back to the way we were? Change you back? Y yes! Please! Uh, 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 please stop that noise! Uh, Heinz, sit! I'm sorry. I can't change you back. No! Yes, you, you can. You're a specialist for Animal Planet. If anybody can do it, you can. This is beyond anything I can do. I'll work with Heinz. I'll teach him new tricks. And me? What about me? Bradley, look at me. Heinz? Come? Sit. Do you like that? Oh, and this? <laughs> I see a dog. Some woman. Son of a bitch, I see Bradley. Oh, that must be the, the great Dr. Springwater. A shrink for dogs. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. She's petting him. Yuck, he just licked her face. <laughs> oh, well, isn't this cozy? Room for me, after all, I am the fiance. Uh, this part of the sanctuary is not open to the public. Oh, I'm here to retrieve Bradley. He's mine, and I intend to get him fixed. Lucinda, I need to be here. And she's not my fiance. She threw a ring at me. I have the dent in the forehead to prove it. And I quit. I no longer work for your firm. Oh, you're under the custody of Dr. Spot. Authorities are looking for you. Uh, I have a feeding schedule to attend to. <laughs> uh, you are welcome to stay. Please don't go. Please, how gentlemanly. Oh, by all means, Helena, please stay. Help me deal with this helpless stray. Lucinda, she understands me. A dog whisperer. What does she whisper? I believe I can help. Oh, I saw how you help. Interesting technique. Lucinda, she understands me. She can help me learn to control my Urges. Urges? Wolfie. I drove for hours just to find you. I, I came all this way to help you. Good boy. I don't trust you anymore. With Heinz and therapy, Dr. Spot can get you back to the drawing board. Hines and I are staying here. No, Bradley, come. Bradley, sit. Bradley, come. Bradley, sit. No, Bradley, come. Bradley, sit. 
One more word and I will choke it down your throat! Don't touch her! Get off me! I wanna tear off your meddling nose. Bite off your flappy fat lip! Bradley, she didn't hurt me. Let her leave. I wanna bite off your pointy ears. Heinz, off! I might be part dog, but you're part vulture. I'll be back with a court order and Dr. Spot. Sense of touch is our most basic way to communicate. In our mother's womb, we feel before we see or smell. Don't give up, Bradley. When disaster strikes, people reinvent themselves to survive. Life means change. You must always accept who you are. So, so I'm. I'm supposed to accept my inner Fido? Thanks. Well, some people lose a part of their body, a, a leg. Some lose their vision, suffer from cancer. Some lose their fortune, or worse, their family. But life goes on. Right. Embrace my urges. Excuse me, I, I have to go chase a cat. You have lost part of yourself, but you gained something. Think about what you gained. Chasing balls? Chewing up my slipper? Barking at my neighbor's dog? Awareness! You are in the moment. Not one little thing escapes your attention. You are brave and protective. You sense how others feel. <laughs> Little things make you happy. <laughs> Is that bad? Bradley, you haven't lost your sight or somebody you love. Don't you see? I lost myself. I, I want them back. I'm an architect. I, I want to draw, not chew on my pencil. You will. I will help you. Do you trust me? I want to bite you hard on the mouth. Really hard. You don't want to hurt me. Look at me. Do you trust me? Yes. I, I trusted you from the first moment I smelled... saw you. <laughs> so sensitive. <laughs> so caring. You are perfect the way that you are.
That's odd. Don't you worry none, babies. There's plenty more. Oh, come on and get some of this. Good for you. Oh yeah, that's turnip there. Yeah. Morning. Morning. You know what these cooters and yellow belly sliders love the most? Green. Really? Yeah. Collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, especially turnip greens. They know what's good for them. Chewing that white bread folks be throwing out there. They like what's fresh. I know that because I've been out here feeding them. A belted kingfisher. A male. You got some better eyes than I right do. Right over there on that big knee. It's one of my favorite birds. Uh, sounds like you know a lot about it. Kind of a bird nerd. I used to c I come here all the time just to watch them. My friends think it's weird, but I love it. Well, I got a soft spot for these silly old turtles, so I understand. Bird watching is a young person's pastime. They're binoculars. Binoculars? I don't mess with that stuff. There's another one. It's Northern Flicker. Look at you. <laughs> Bird nerd, I told you. Flicker. Uh, that's the one with the black speckles all over his belly. Yep, that's the one. Back when I was a kid, we used to call them yellow hammers. Yeah, we had nicknames for a lot of birds. That bird of yours, that kingfisher, we called him the old clown bird. Because of that big old head and that <laughs> crazy hairdo. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, babies. That's all I got for now. Till next time. I've been on my feet a while. Mind if I sit down? Oh, sure. Oh, just a second. For safety, you know. You don't have to explain yourself to me. Whew. So it is a pretty day. It is. That's why I wanted to. I better get going. Oh, don't leave on my account. No, it's fine. I, I just have something I need to do. And you want to do it here? I don't want to do it at all. It's got something to do. What's in that knapsack? Let me give you some privacy. No, it's okay, please. <laughs> Actually, it might be nicer not to do it alone. Ashes. She loved to come here, you know. Watch the light dancing on the water. 
smell the azaleas. Maybe even spot an alligator or two. And watch the birds. Yeah. I know you told me that old clown bird was your favorite, but you know what mine is? Well, parakeets, of course. All them colors, red, yellow, and green. You have a pet parakeet? Keep a bird in the cage? I don't know, I was never one like that. I'm talking about the wild ones. When I was a kid, we used to see millions of them. Still see a few every now and then. That's... Why, well, there ain't nothing like watching a flock of parakeets take over a cockleberry patch. They'll feast on them cockleberry seeds all day, and them prickles don't worry them one bit. But you seen Carolina parakeets, wild parakeets, here, when you were a kid? That's amazing. Yeah, I couldn't miss them with all them bright colors. Even these tired old eyes can see them. That's impossible. They went extinct like a hundred years ago. You sit here a little while longer and you'll see them too. Yeah. I see them every time I come to feed my turtles. Okay. That's a real pretty urn. My husband made it. He's a potter. Would you mind? Yeah, that's a, a real pretty urn. He made it for me. You can see why I like it. Mind if I ask what happened? <laughs> COVID. A year ago, that would have been a big deal. You know, the new pandemic. Now, you're just another statistic. It's like the flu, right? That's what a lot of people said at first. They didn't want to take it seriously. Then it just kept spiking and spiking. It's not like she wasn't careful, you know? She always kept her distance, wore her mask, <laughs> even here. God, she loved it here. Everyone said, you're crazy. Why not do it by the ocean? You got Wrightsville Beach, Fort Fisher, not some murky old lake in the middle of the city. But my mind was already made up. It's not like there was anything else they could do anyway. Why is that? <laughs> On the COVID ward, you're isolated. <laughs> no friends, no family, no one to hold your hand or touch your face. They'll let you text, you know, if you're able. And then when you get to the point where you can't, you know, hold up your phone, the nurses will do it for you. That's in a hospital, right? Yeah. I don't get it. I was in a hospital too, you know. You were? But you're okay now. I'm here, ain't I? And so are you. It was the influenza that got me. Great war just winding down, and people thought everything was gonna be good. And then influenza hit, and people were dropping like flies. What are you talking about? I, I can't explain it. I don't ask. That's one of them parakeets now. That's impossible. Where's my stuff? Oh, you don't need none of that now. What the hell is going on? It's all right. My ashes were scattered here too. You ain't the only one who loves this murky old lake. Are you? Am 
I? Would say we take a little walk and get a closer look at that pretty parakeet. Mindfulness and meditation. All right. Step one, get comfortable. Okay. Step two, focus your breath. Take cleansing breaths. Breathe deeply in through your nose, out through your mouth. Um, step three, smooth breathing for two minutes. it is good to use a mantra or a calming word to help you get centered.
Um, I'm going to do this even if it kills me. Um. A little dirty. Second. Yeah. I. Okay, I guess third time is. Uh, maybe here. Maybe it's a, a chip. Thing. Are you sure this thing works? Is is it broken? idea. Hello? 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 Oh, mom, yeah, no, sorry, I, uh, <laughs> I butt dialed you by accident, I didn't realize I did that. <laughs> um, what? The, that's, I don't think that's how that the Wi-Fi works. Um, you just do you know how to re? No, just unpl. I'll just do it. I'll do it when I get home. Okay, I I get it. Hey, I'm I'm meeting Jenny. I get. Did you make the taco spicy? Okay, awesome. Uh, can I enjoy J uh, Jenny for dinner? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. I will let you know. I I gotta go now. All right. Okay. Hey, I love you too. All right. Bye. Yep. This is definitely a bad idea. How can I not go forward with it? I can't keep doing this to myself. I'm at peace with my decision. I am one with the earth. I'm focused. Yeah. How do I tell him it's over? Maybe I just need to practice. Yeah. Peter, we both have changed. Our, our lives are different now. No. Better to say, our lives have been going different directions for some time now. Yes, that's better. Your path in life has perfect symmetry, like, like that English garden in section one. You are perfectly organized with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And my path is more random and spiritual, like this Japanese garden. I'm living in the moment with no real goals. I want to stop and smell the roses, and you just want to get to your next appointment. Yes, that works. Straightforward to the point. 
be forceful, but kind. This will change his Garden of Eden into a forest of thorns. Hey, Jen. Hello, Peter. Mm, sorry I'm late. Um, drivers in this town all seem to be either retired or on vacation. <laughs> oh, that's right. They are. <laughs> oh, gazoon tight. Peter, come, come sit in the shade. Sorry, I forgot you were allergic to everything on God's green earth. <laughs> yeah, that for sure has not changed. Um, but I do have my EpiPen with me, if needed. Uh, do you remember how to use it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, so basically you just pull top, push the pen, and then like right there, like right in a a little bit of that muscle. Yeah, oh. you just smack it in there. Just, just not, not too hard. Don't, don't hurt me. All right, got it. Mm. I actually thought this was a great place to meet. Yeah, it's been years. I think the last time I was with my first wife, right before she left me. You know, we adored this place until that special day. I seem to develop my allergies right after that. I guess you could say I was allergic to the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless you. Peter, I have something mm. to say. Mm -hmm. And you need not interrupt me as you always do. If you stop me, I will lose my nerve. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> what are you doing? Well, Jin, on the way over here, I stopped at my ex's and got this from her. She said she wasn't using it anymore, so I could have it back. Besides, hell, they're the same ring size. As soon as you called, I knew what I had to do. Oh, um, up until now, this is my favorite spot in Wilmington. Are you serious? I mean, I'm dead serious, babe. I think it's time to make this permanent and finally make an honest woman out of you. Will you be my second wife? Are you out of your friggin' mind? No oh, crap! The hell with Zen, the hell with Mother Nature, and the hell with you! Well, that is a lovely ring. Is that a yellow diamond? Uh, no, uh, here, help me. No, no, it's just, uh, just a little dirty. Um, I figured I would get it cleaned right after you said yes. agreeing to meet with me. You're quite the busy lady. I've been trying to reach you for a couple of months. How are you? Hello, Bill. It's okay if I call you Bill, right? That will be fine, Miss Hurston. And please, call me Zora. I'm way too young to be called Miss Hurston. Just plain old Zora will do. Of course. Bill, I'm sorry I'm just getting back to you. I've been traveling the past year. So glad you could meet me here in Wilmington. 
So, are you ready to talk about my new essay? I haven't heard. What do you call it? How it feels to be colored me. It's the reason why I thought you wanted to meet. So far, I've gotten some pretty good reviews. Well, Miss Her Zora, I actually wanted to discuss the project you worked on with Langston. Hughes? You want to talk about Langston Hughes? Man, what do I have to do with Langston? Miss Sora, I just want to talk about the project you worked on together and why it stalled. You see, we, well, the New Yorker has gotten unusual questions about the project. Our readers want to know if it will be staged. Hmm. Okay, um, so I hear what you're saying. You want new readers for your magazine, so you think Mule Bone will make the difference. That's the name of the play. It's been three years since we worked on that play. My editor wants me to write more articles that will appeal to Negroes. You know, your people. <sighs> okay. I see what you're after. I'll tell you the whole story, if you agree to write a review about my new essay. It's a deal. I'm all ears, Miss Sora. It was late spring 1927 when I ran into Langston in Mobile, Alabama. I was at the train station getting directions when he stepped off the train from New Orleans. Langston was dapper, sharp. I knew he was that young Roddy taking Harlem by storm. He looked straight at me with piercing eyes, unlike any man I've ever met. He was adorable. I was mesmerized. I knew I'd stick around to see him. When did you meet Langston? He was at a table with another man when I got to the restaurant. I went right up to the table and I said, you sure are a long way from home, aren't you? He looked up at me through cigarette smoke and smiled and said, Zora Neale Hurston. The next thing I knew, he pulled up a chair and from that moment, we were inseparable. How did both of you happen to be there? I mean, in Alabama. I was doing some research for my book and he was giving a read at Fisk University when he's detained by the flood. Bill, do you remember that flood that happened a few years ago? I sure do. The Great Mississippi Flood. Over 500 lives were lost. We covered it. It was massive. Yeah, it was a doozy. Anyway, Langston's plans were canceled and um, we spent time together, I mean, I'm doing research, and um, I was working on ethnography, and I don't know what he was working on, but we sure had a lot of fun. How long did you and Langston stay together? We spent three glorious weeks driving around the South talking about folklore. We ate, went to juke joints, and danced. We usually spent the evening talking way into the early morning hours, and sometimes even until when the sun came up. He always slept in his own room. So there was no romance? No. Well, none to speak of. I mean, Langston was a gentleman. Sometimes we tease and I got close enough to smell the sweet scent of his breath. And when we touched, even by accident, it was electric, but usually unintentional. What did the two of you talk about? But first we talked about our different projects, then talked about working on a joint project, and we usually talked about life in general. And when did you get back to Harlem to work on Mulebone? That was the darndest thing. When we got back to Harlem, things were different between us. How so? He seemed more formal. When we met Charlotte Osgood Mason, our benefactor, he was different. We called her our Park Avenue godmother. Why did you call her that? Miss Mason was good friends with Mr. Allen Locke, the professor, you know, the first Negro Road scholar. He talked to her about Langston and me and a few other Negro artists. <laughs> it was she who suggested that we do a joint project. <laughs> she hired Louise Thompson as our typist to get things moving. Who is Louise Thompson? Louise. The hussy that broke up our friendship. 
She hardly typed anything. She was too busy in Langston's face. Whenever I entered the room, the two of them were talking and laughing. No work was getting done. I believe I read about her. She married Wallace Thurman, the writer, and divorced him the same year when she found out he was homosexual. He and Langston were friends, right? Huh? I don't know anything about that. All I know is that woman had her sights set on him from day one, and he fell for it. I admit, I was jealous. This beautiful mixed race woman was getting all of Langston's attention. He was smitten by her. So what happened with the play? When I entered the room, Louise and Langston were so close, they could have been kissing. I flew off the handle and fired her on the spot. Wow, this is getting interesting. Tell me more about that. Langston and I fell out. He went after her. She grabbed her belongings and and left. And of course, she ran straight to that woman. Your benefactor? Yes, Miss Charlotte. She could be so callous, controlling. But she also had a good side, softer. If it wasn't for her money, I don't know how I could have made it through this recession. What happened to Miss Charlotte? Does she still back you? No. I left that summer to do more research on my book and took all my mule bone notes with me. I wrote to Miss Charlotte to let her know I plan to continue the play in the fall. She sent me a telegram telling me that Langston wanted to give Louise writing credit. I thought, ain't that about a blip? Neither of them really did any real work. It was all based on my research. So I got a copyright and then she cut me off. Is this what caused the tension and the split between you and Langston? Well, it was rumored that he suffered an anxiety attack when he learned of the copyright. I read he went home to his mama. I felt bad, so I went to Ohio to see him. I wanted to apologize, to tell him that I loved him and I was foolish. And did you? No. I didn't get the chance. His mama was angry. She called me every name in the book. If it wasn't for Langston's uncle, she would have laid hands on me. So I left quickly. That was the last time I saw Langston. So how do you feel about Langston now? I miss him terribly. If I happen to hear his name, I get butterflies in my stomach. If I happen to see pictures of him, I think about him for the rest of the day. Whenever I pray, I always pray for him. I love him. Always will. He's still my favorite guy. Well, that's my side of the story. Call me when you want to discuss my new essay. If you want to know anything else about us, call Langston. <laughs>